Today I'm going to show you how to connect this eGPU to this Mac Mini. That's not right. To this 2013 Mac Pro. Let's go. Anyway, welcome guys. I'm Greg Reich here at Reich and Mods, and welcome to episode 5 of season 4 of my Mac Pro series. Today's episode, we are going to be showing you how to connect an eGPU to one of these 2013 Mac Pros. And uh, right now we have my Vega 56 here. This will work up to uh, this card and I think one other one. The instruction sets for the drivers don't exist on this CPU. Uh, so newer cards don't work, but older cards do. And uh, I'll put a list of the cards that uh, don't work um, in the description below. But um, a Vega 56 definitely does work. In fact, I've tested this on here before, but I've since wiped this thing and have to do it all over again. So I'm going to show you how to do it and how to get it to work properly. So um, yeah, let's get to it. Okay guys, so let's start with what you're going to actually need. Of course you'll need your 2013 Mac Pro. You'll need a compatible GPU in a compatible Thunderbolt enclosure here. This one is a Razer Core X and uh, it is Thunderbolt 3. Now they did make some Thunderbolt 2 enclosures. Uh, you could use those, or you could use a Thunderbolt 3 enclosure. As long as it's compatible with the patcher, it will work. Um, but if you're using a Thunderbolt 3, you'll need a Thunderbolt cable uh, and a Thunderbolt uh, 2 to 3 adapter. So after you get all that, you of course will also need a monitor, but you already have a Mac Pro, so of course you have a monitor. And once everything's set up, you can just switch to this. You can even just use one cable unless your monitor supports two displays. Then you could run both, which would be pretty neat. Um, so, yeah. So before we hook everything up, let's quickly talk about the Thunderbolt ports. There's three different controllers, one per every two sets. So there's one, two, three controllers. And the biggest one with the most bandwidth for a graphics card is supposedly port number six. So if you plug it into there, that's where you want to have it plugged in. So right now we have the Mac Pro plugged directly into the monitor here. And uh, we're going to set up, but this is what everything should look like when it is hooked up, so cool. So yeah, guys, by any chance, does this look familiar? Yes, this is my 23-inch cinema display from season one, two, three. It's been in like every season. And yes, I still have it, and yes, it still works flawlessly. And this is the original display I had on my 1,1 Mac Pro. And it's going to continue being on my future Mac Pros probably because it's still a good display. But anyway, guys, I want to talk to you about why uh, you would want to do this, and that's really simple. Better rendering, better gaming capabilities. But how you do that is the next thing. And what I want to talk to you about is actually what you need to do it. You'll need the patches for it, of course. You'll also need a copy of OpenCore Legacy Patcher, and you'll need a copy of Monterey. Even though this is the last natively supported OS, uh, this You'll still need open core to apply the patches properly, and it just helps enhance the system to begin with anyway, so it doesn't hurt to have open core legacy patcher on it. You'll need all that, and once you have that downloaded, we'll continue on. So I'm going to do that now because I haven't done it yet. By the way, if you're wondering why we are using Monterey and not a newer OS like Sonoma or Ventura or something like that, it's very simple. The new patches don't work for some reason. Something to do with driver incompatibilities and stuff. I don't know if they're ever going to fix it. And I want to experiment with that in the future and try to make it work with the newer systems. But right now, Monterey is still supported until towards the end of the year anyway, so it's not a huge loss yet. And of course, there'll still be other updates for browsers and stuff. So it will still be mostly secure in the future anyway, if this is the last OS that supports eGPUs. So that's why. 
So guys, we're going to have to download Kryptonite. And this is the reason why you have to run Monterey right now is because it doesn't, the system doesn't support AVX2. And uh, even if you get it to work in the newer OSs, which we're going to try, uh, if you have a newer Polaris Vega or Navi series, it just doesn't work apparently. So uh, that's going to be an issue. Uh, but that's the reason why it doesn't work. Anyway, let's show you what you need here. So, I will put a link in the description below for this. This is Kryptonite, which allows you to enable eGPUs uh, on Thunderbolt 2 and older machines. And uh, it, it works quite well. It works a lot better than the old uh, Purge Wrangler, uh, which is what I used in some of the other videos we've done in the past. Uh, but Kryptonite works well. I've gotten it to work well before. Uh, you will have to go to the west, this website, which I'll have it in the uh, description below. And then you'll want to go and uh, download it, which will be right here. And once you download it, you go over, go to releases, and you download the release.zip here. And uh, then you take it from there. Okay, so before you do anything, you want to make sure you have Open Core Legacy Patcher installed. Once that's installed, you'll want to reboot the system and make sure the menu pops up. All right, guys, so what you're going to want to do is to make sure that your boot menu works on your Open Core and everything's working properly. So you hold in the Option key when it restarts. You hit EFI boot, and then you boot into it, and now we're in OpenCore. All right, so here's the installation guide on how you set up Kryptonite. And before you even begin, you might want to review the compatibility, but I already know this works. I've tried it before. It works fine. So we're going to follow these instructions, and it should, in theory, just work. I hope. Oh, zero. You're going to have to follow all these, but first things first, you will have to boot your EFI partition. So what we're going to do is go over to Terminal. So I want to have full support on this thing. So we're going to go into full administrator mode by typing in sudo bash. Typing in our password. And now we're fully in. And we're going to want to mount our EFI partition. So, and our EFI partition is on disk 0s1, which means we need to type in And then we have to follow and type this in. And it is that that is the right one. If your disk is different, you'll want to change that. I didn't copy it. All right, let's see if it's mounted. It is mounted. That is the EFI drive. So now we need to follow the installation guide. Uh, you want to make sure that everything you have here is in the downloads folder. You can copy this, and I'll have a link to this up in the uh, in the description. Detecting hardware. If you are using OpenCore any for any other purchases of blah blah blah, uh, press yes. Otherwise, yes, we do want it. So hit yes. Drag and drop your open core disk here. Enter. Enter. Do you want to emit logs for testing? Use debug resources. We don't need them. Are you using an NVIDIA GPU? No. It's read everything. Uh, make sure everything's right here. Yes. Okay, that's everything we need to do, apparently. Um, it's been a while since I've done this, so I don't know if it's going to work. Let's find out. 
So we will close out terminal here and we will restart the system. It does indeed show up in the corner of the screen. That's a good sign about this Mac. It's only reading the main screen right now, but we go system information. If we go to displays, there it is. It's working now. So if I swip, swap the cards, it should in theory work. So we're going to unplug the Mac Pro and plug it directly into the box. We're plugged directly into the box. So now if we go back to Vega 56, it worked. So yeah. That's all that we need to do to set up the eGPU. In next episode, we're going to test it and see how it works. But I just wanted to film this video right now so you guys know what to do. So let's uh, finish up the video. So yeah, guys, that is how you get an eGPU to work on this 2013 Mac Pro. And it works very well, as you can see here. This is doing over 90 frames per second. And... Uh, Staying fairly cool back here. This is doing basically nothing. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, that's an eGPU on a 2013 Mac Pro. I'd like to do some benchmark tests and stuff and try to actually see how this performs in a future video. And uh, we'd all, I'd also like to try in a newer OS, um, even though they say it won't work. Uh, there's been a lot of patches since the last update for Kryptonite, which was in 2022 and uh, it may work now with the new versions so I don't know we'll find out and that would be very interesting to see if it actually does work if not I mean Monterey is still a decent OS I mean it's still modern it's still getting software updates until towards the end of the year uh, so it's not a huge loss quite yet but uh, you know <laughs> point is to get this as newest OS possible and that's been kind of a problem because the CPU support and all that stuff it's yeah but anyway that's the end of today's video I hope you enjoyed today's video and don't forget do have a Patreon and memberships if you'd like to join there'll be a link down below and etc etc you know the, the drill by now but yeah that's the end of today's video and this has been a okay, Mods video Don't worry, this was actually an empty shell. I don't know where that came from. Okay guys, so let's start with what you're going to actually need. You're going to need me. So yeah guys, does this by any chance look familiar? Yes, this is my 23 inch cinema split. What we're going to do is go over to terminal. Um, it's not supposed to do that. Something's wrong here. One of my keyboards are messed up. Okay, it stopped. Yeah. So I want to have full... What the hell? Let's reopen it. We go system information. It will act really slow and old and not load anything. System information. It's still not doing anything. Yeah. I hate this series. System information. And, yeah. Okay. If we go to displays, there it is. It's working now.